So we're entering into a transitional period. We're moving from the archaic into the early classical period. The classical period is that high point of Greece, the Parthenon and all of that. And as we do, we're going to see major shifts in the architecture as well as the sculpture being created in this period. The piece we're looking at is the Temple of Aphaea. And this is built between 500 and 490 BCE, give or take. And it's important because we see these changes taking place on the same temple. Now this temple is dedicated to a local goddess by the name of Aphaea. And this is a much more compact structure than the Temple of Hera I. So this is what we see today of the Temple of Aphaea. But if we look at a recreation, this gives you an idea of what it would have looked like. Here the columns are more widely spread and they're more slender even though they're going to be Doric. Instead of columns down the middle of the cella, we have a double colonnade down the center. So instead of one row here, we have two rows of columns on either side. This allows for a cult statue to be placed here. And these would be massive statues between 30 and 60 feet tall, depending on the temple. Each of these rows on the inside, inside the cella, have two stories. So there's, as you can see here, there's a lintel between these two stories. Uh, because they're not, they don't want to build columns that are that tall. And this allows the statue in the middle to be visible from the entrance. And this is how most Greek temples would work, is they would open these doors in the center. And of course you can't go in as your average layperson, but you could see the cult statue from the outside. So you could have your conversations with the god, or you could see your sacrifice being made to the god, potentially. Now, both the pediments were filled with life-size statuary. And this is the west pediment. And you see here, unlike what we saw at the Temple of Artemis, all of the figures are the same size. So instead of making figures smaller as they move down to the edges of the triangle, they change their pose so that we have reclining figures or kneeling figures as we move closer to those edges. And what we're seeing is a theme from the Trojan War with Athena at the center. Athena is a little bit larger than everyone else because of hierarchy of scale, because she's a god. This is not an idea that's going to stay around for the Greeks. They will change that shortly. All the other figures are at the same scale. But what gets interesting is our figure in the center here. This is the dying warrior from the western from the west pediment. And by the way, he was carved nude, but you see these holes, they aren't the result of stone termites. Those are actually drill holes so that they could put bronze armor on him. Uh, you see the same on Athena. She would have worn an aegis or a piece of chest armor uh, made of bronze. But look at this warrior. He's a dying warrior. He would have had a spear entering this hole right here, a bronze spear. But yet, even though he's dying, he seems to be looking over going, Hey, how's it going? Don't mind me over here getting a little blood on your carpets. But I'm not dead yet. It's okay. Then we move to the East Pediment. This is built 10 years later, around 480. And we see a massive difference because again, we have a dying warrior. So the one at the top is the archaic, older dying warrior from the west side of the temple. The one below is the east side of the temple, the newer warrior. And the comparison really highlights the stylistic changes. Suddenly, Instead of going, sorry for bleeding all over your carpet, but hey, how's it going? Pour yourself a drink if you want. We have the warrior at the bottom from the east pediment who is completely ignoring us. Again, speared through the chest. In fact, you can see that hole right here where the spear would have come out and passed through his hand. 
And he's of course ignoring us, because that's usually what happens when you have a 12 foot piece of wood shoved through your chest. His expression matches what's going on. He looks like a man who's dying. Look at his arm in the shield. And it's got that very awkward pose as if the shield is actually holding him up. Otherwise, he would be laying flat on the ground. And this is a lot more realistic than propping yourself up on your elbow and looking straight at the viewer. He's interested in his pain, not the viewer. And this creates a much more classical feel for the piece. The statue seems to move and possess a self-consciousness of real man. The one thing that's definitely still missing, though, is expression. If you look at the face, it's very deadpan, it's very stoic. It's not the expression of someone in incredible pain who's on their, well, deathbed. So it is, they, we still haven't hit that point of getting the expression right. We will get there. But we're a lot closer to realism when we're not sitting there looking at a smiling archaic figure pulling a spear out of his chest as if it's some kind of odd miracle or it's Superman or something. 